Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to April's Comfort Book Club discussion. My mum Donna is joining me. Hello. As usual, to chat about this month's Comfort Book Club choice, which was The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This is such a favourite of ours. It is, and what a yeah, what a great choice for this year, as it's her centenary of the publication. Exactly, so it was first perfect. published in 1922, so a hundred years yes. on, here we're still d discussing and loving Elizabeth von Arman's most famous book. So it was great to have another excuse to reread it. <laughs> So special thanks to all of the readers who sent in a voice message about their thoughts on the book. We really loved hearing from all of you and I'll be including those messages in this discussion. We've got lots, so I'm really excited about that. So as usual, I have my notes to help me remember when to include the voice messages and I have my phone for that as well. But we chose The Enchanted April not only because of the centenary, but also because it's one of our favourite books that it we is love to reread. Yes. Uh, we've got some treats for our discussion. I suggest yeah. you go get a cup of tea or your yes. favourite hot beverage too, and maybe something sweet to eat. Yeah. We have little lemon tarts. Um, we couldn't get our mouthy lemons, but... No, we didn't, but we did the best we, we could. We did the best we could. <laughs> <laughs> if you like one. Oh, thank you, um, mm. So, yes, make yourself comfortable. And maybe get a little sweet treat, too. Mm. 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 <laughs> I love lemon tart. Mm. Mm. Perfect accompaniment. I think so. To an Elizabeth von Arnhem book, you know. Yeah. A little sourness in with the strip, yeah. in with the sweet. <laughs> yeah. And fresh. Very mm -hmm. fresh. Mm. That's true. Invigorating. Mm -hmm. Like spring. <laughs> so, this book was a reread for both of us. I mean, we've read it a few times in the yeah. past. And it was a reread for some of the Comfort Book Club readers, too. Um, Faith from. America sent a voice message saying that this is one of her favourite books and that she loved rereading it this month as well. Hello, Miranda, Donna, and the Comfort Book Club. My name is Faith, and I'm from Massachusetts in the United States. I'm so excited that The Enchanted April was chosen for this month's discussion because it's been my go-to comfort read for years. Truly, Von Armin transports her readers to this magical place of San Salvatore where everything works out in the end. One feels as if they are in the gardens with Lottie, Rose, and Scrap looking down upon the cacophony of blooms that sweep to the rippling sea, and one can almost feel the sea breezes that carry the fragrance of all those flowers back up the hill wash over them. Each time I read this book, I feel peaceful and joyful. Oh, Aww. that's lovely. Thank you, Faith. Faith. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. And I think it's so true that... The Enchanted April is a book that's not just about the escape of its characters. You know, it's no. a book that is about female freedom and female escape, but it also offers an escape for it, its readers. It definitely does. You you really feel like you're going to an, an enchanted place with this exactly. book, Exactly. There's that fairy tale like quality yeah. to the whole story. And for the reader, you feel like you enter into that world and you're a part of the magic. Definitely. And I think that's something that is such a big part of a comfort read. It's when a read is truly escapist in a yes. way too. You can just yes. immerse yourself in the world and you know you're in a sort of safe and happy place. It definitely, very secure. And I, I love the way with the title, which when they made the film later, of course, they called it Enchanted April. But the book, very interestingly to me, is The the Enchanted April. There's only one. Yes, There isn't exactly. lots of them. It's a special no, place. No, it's this one special time mm -hmm. that the characters got to experience and that yeah. the reader does as well. And um, another Comfort Book Club reader sent in a message about this too, that The Enchanted April 
was a book that she's returned to many times, particularly sometimes during hard times. Mm, that's interesting. Um, so this was Dick Tinner from London. Hello, Miranda and Donna. My name is Dick Tinner and I live in London. I felt impelled to say how much The Enchanted April has meant to me. Of all books, it is the one I have reread most. I have also had it read to me by my partner while staying in hospital after my daughter was born prematurely. I find it a hugely soothing read, while its descriptions of the garden and scenery around San Salvatore fill me with delight. Its immense wittiness also brings great pleasure. More than anything, though, I find it to be a guide for life, to lovingly open oneself to beauty and pleasure, to allow this as an intrinsic part of being human. Thank you for the opportunity to reflect on this lovely book. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Dick thank Kinner. you. And yes, how lovely that the book was read to her. That is lovely. By her husband. It is. Um, during a, a difficult time. I can yeah. imagine it's such a soothing book yes. to have yes. read to you. And I would really recommend the audiobook for this, actually. Yes. I have the audiobook read by Eleanor Bron. And I think it's available for free for audible members i think i was able to add it to my library that way but that was a little while ago so i don't know if that's still the case um but hopefully it is but it's very worth getting anyway she reads yes. it brilliantly she does yeah. it's actually a lovely story to listen to as well as to read yourself um but i love too how dick Tinner spoke about feeling that the enchanted april was in some ways a guide to life and how to live and i felt that elizabeth von arnhem put a lot of her own philosophy of life and her own wishes yes i think you're right for life um, yeah. in some ways obviously the enchanted april is very much an idealized take on life yeah um how much would we all wish to escape sometimes to a place where you were suddenly able to love freely and be loved freely and uh, experience that kind of joy and yeah. connectedness. Yes, very much. Didn't you think of um, Howard's End later mm. with, um, you know, Only Connect? Only Connect, yes. yes. That yeah. theme of love and of connection yeah. really does... Um, appear in the enchanted april yeah, just like shines Howard's through in. i it think really yeah. does. yes yeah. and yeah i thought that elizabeth von arnhem put a lot of herself into this book it was interesting realizing that she wrote her darkest book vera the the year before it came out the year before the enchanted april mm. so it came out in 1921 and Vera was very much a novel about Elizabeth von Arnhem's disastrous second marriage yeah. and an incredibly unhappy time that she went through and she ended up fleeing from that second husband. And then I think she very much turned her mind towards wanting to write a book about happiness. Yes, I agree with you. She's an author that's interested in happiness as a theme, yes, generally. Yes, right which, from the very early, like Elizabeth and the German Garden, you yes, see that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's so interesting because, yeah. you know, a lot of authors... Uh, don't deign to write <laughs> no. about something like happiness. No. And I love the fact that Elizabeth von Arnhem did, and she was yeah. really interested in how to be happy and what happiness meant. And maybe some of her own personal yearning came into the Enchanted April. I mean, she had just left a marriage that was not solvable. Yeah. It was not in an enchanted land where no, these no. things work out. Um, so maybe she had a bit of her own yearning going on in that book um, and that her marriage was not fixable. But there's so much a sense of joy and of transformation and of strength draw drawn from the natural world. Absolutely. And that's always a part of her writing. Yes, yes. I think that her love of gardens really shines through not in this one too. I mean, it's just there, isn't it, all through? Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, that sort yeah. of beautiful nature writing. And so sort of sensual, so much um, you, your senses are appealed to with her writing. I love that about it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I read her autobiography 
autobiography or the closest thing to her yes. autobiography was which was all the dogs of my life <laughs> I love that which, title yeah, I really <laughs> recommend it is mainly about all the dogs of my yes, life yes uh, but there is a bit of sort of autobiography in it too and interestingly Elizabeth von Arnhem wrote about how she found happiness and she really valued solitude as a part of happiness or yes. only having a dog for company yeah. and being able to work and feel at peace when she lived somewhere where she had a lot of sort of personal freedom um, but was also in beautiful natural surroundings yeah. and Virginia Woolf later than the Enchanted yes. April yes wrote her famous essay, A Room, a Room of, of One's Own. Own. Yes, of course. And I think some of those ideas are explored a little bit earlier in The Definitely. Enchanted I April. mean, the first morning they get there and they wake up in their own bedroom and Lottie's description of it is like it's... um that She has a little quote and it's actually from Pilgrim's Progress. You know, it's, mm. like, it's like a little, like, sort of monastic cell, her bedroom. But yes. also... Also kind of a little slice of heaven. She has it all to herself. Yes, exactly. She specifically notes how wonderful it is to wake up in a bed by herself. <laughs> yes. With a room that she can lock. Yes. <laughs> so having a room of one's own yeah. is shown as so important for women. And also how women so often don't get that. Yeah. Um even today, yes, yes. <laughs> that is, of course, uh, I think that still resonates with yeah. women. Yeah. And Jason in New Zealand um, also sent in a voice message and he made another interesting connection to Virginia Woolf um, from reading The yeah. Enchanted April. So I thought, share his message. Hello, this is Jason from New Zealand. Elizabeth von Arnhem's Enchanted April is an ode to flowers, gardens, and how holidays can be a restorative journey of discovery. The writing about flowers conveyed so much about the character's situations, like when Lottie Wilkins said having fresh-cut freesias in the home was so expensive that she would find an excuse to go into a shop to lift the flowers into her arms to smell them. This is why my favourite part in the book is Lottie's impressions when she first throws open the shutters of her room at San Salvatore, which is captured in these immortal words. Oh, cried Mrs. Wilkins, all the radiance of April in Italy lay gathered at her feet, and underneath her window at the bottom of the flower-starred grass slope was a great cypress cutting through the delicate blues and violets and rose colours of the mountains. By the end of the book, I hoped that Mrs. Wilkins would be so renewed in life that she, like Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway, might be able to buy the flowers herself. Miranda and Donna, this book took me to a place where the flowers were tumbling over themselves in excess of life, and my spirits are better and more exuberant for that. Thank you both for this joyous book recommendation. Oh, thank oh, you. Thank you, Jason. Jason. Yes, yes. yeah. Um, yeah, so so interesting to think of Mrs. Dalloway. It is, and it is. Just like how Mrs. Dalloway is a real post-World War One novel and is about a lot of the after-effects of trauma from the oh, war. Yes. I think some of that comes into The Enchanted April as well. Yeah. And it should definitely be read in context of realising that the she first must have written World in War. 1921 too, the year before it was yes, published. So it, was so even it wasn't, closer. yeah, it was yeah. still pretty close yes. to the war. And Lady Caroline's life in the book has been directly touched by the war. Um, she had, she lost a man in the war, yeah. he was killed. The only man it said that she felt safe with, that she yeah. would have married yes. um both rose and lottie are taken to be war widows yes. by mrs fisher yeah. and of course and mrs briggs fisher too, of and course. by mrs yes. briggs yeah. yeah and mrs fisher of course is this hilarious sort of embodiment of pre-war yes. ideas yes. and values you know the sort of victorian <laughs> exactly and her in comparison to Lady Caroline, who's very much of the post-war yeah. years, a bright young yes, thing, absolutely. You know, sort of nineteen twenty society. That's quite funny. It is, um, and yes, I sort of enjoy that about the book. But also, the readers at the time 
would have also been living in sort of post-war austerity. Yes. Um, yes, and the dreariness of the poor dreariness of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's like Lady Caroline thing. So yes, didn't they live in Hampstead? Like, because unless you were poor, you know, why else well, would, so you would you live, live in Hampstead? Yes. <laughs> what the difference? Time, a hundred years. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, that was hilarious. But yes, I think sort of uh, this yearning for flowers, this yearning for life and colour yes. and warmth, that would have really been felt by people, especially yes. in the post-war years. Absolutely. And you had the feeling that still that food wasn't that great. She had problems getting the right soul, yes. um, you know, and, yeah. and things like this. And you think, oh, yes, like the shopping was so tedious. It was lovely when they went there. They didn't have any of that practicality. Exactly. That, that was a holiday feeling too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I thought that was very significant mm. that all of the women didn't want to be responsible <laughs> no. for the housekeeping. None of them wanted to order the meals or anything. No. They wanted a real holiday yes. from that kind of duty and yes. having to think about economy as well yes. which you could tell they apart from Lady Caroline yeah they all did yes, yes at home but although there are echoes of World War One and there are hints at sadness I think Elizabeth von Arnhem's tone is just so comic it's, and it's so light so much wit that yes she does it's it's so yeah. witty and um that keeps it um from getting ever too gloomy yes I agree completely it keeps that lovely fairy tale element mm. going and I mean even the descriptions of the food which are actually very lightly described yes, aren't they there's they not are. a lot but it always sounds so fresh and lovely it does yes there's some yes. humor in it yeah there is well. too <laughs> yes. the macaroni Fisher trying to eat the <laughs> macaroni yes true Victorian it's interesting how everybody else drops the you know the misses and they become you know um, Rose and Lottie and Scrap yes um, you know instead of Lady Caroline and everything yes and, but Mrs. Fisher who's a true sort of Victorian Victorian yeah. relic she maintains. Yes, you, you never Fisher. even know no. her first name. No. Yes. Um, but Heather, also from the States, from Maine in the USA, um, phoned in. And one of the things she especially appreciated in this book was the humour of the writing. So we'll listen to her message. Hi, Miranda and Donna. I'm Heather from Maine. Thank you for suggesting this as the April Book Club read. It was perfect to me being here in Maine, where April is so botanically transformative. It was the perfect pairing. I laughed and laughed because Elizabeth von Arnhem's writing is so perceptive about the way people misread one another, and the early chapters read like a comedy of miscommunication. Then, wonderfully, just as the flowers bloom and become, so did the characters in the story— Von Arnhem's descriptions of the castle grounds and plants are so delightful, and I felt like I was reading a painting instead of a book. The story feels like a sun-kissed fairy tale, and Von Arnhem has certainly cast a spell over me, being funny and sweet and tender-hearted about us silly humans. Thank you so much, Miranda and Donna. Take care. Oh, thank you, Heather. I'm so glad that you enjoyed the book so yes, much. Yes, thank you very much, Heather. Loved your message. Yeah. And yes, I think one of Elizabeth Von Arnhem's Greatest strength as a writer is her nature writing. Yes, absolutely. It really yeah. is incredible. Yes. And, of course, um, San Salvatore was based on a real place yes. and a real holiday that Elizabeth von yes. Arnhem went on. And while she, w while she was in Italy, she started writing The Enchanted April. So she was really writing from what she saw around her. I think her. she sort of started the tourist hordes going to Portofino area. She did. The she did. She really, yeah, she set yes. a trend. Yes. Um, it, and we uh, know why. Yeah. <laughs> We'd all we all want to go. to go there once <laughs> yes. you've read that book. I know. <laughs> And what's interesting is the women aren't typical tourists. Not at all. Um, they're not interested in going exploring the cafes and the restaurants. Uh, they're there really to enjoy their solitude, really to just soak up the atmosphere of the yeah. Italian sunshine, the beauty around them. And it's that that transforms them yeah but I love all her descriptions of flowers and you had a really interesting point about 
how the flowers change they do obviously the the blossoming is happening at this incredible rate but they start with really very um i think there's the sort of the vibrant colors and the darkness of the cypress and then there's the judith's tree yes. with its bright blossoms and then you go on but by the end everything that's described in those final paragraphs is white mm-hmm. and i can't help thinking that's you know looking ahead perhaps to bridal white for scrap yes. and Briggs in um because you know I think there's definitely hinted isn't it she says I yes, see them as yes. the Briggs and we know that Lottie's yes, yes. visions always, always come, come true. to pass yeah yes. yeah yeah that was very clever and I think that yeah. that is true yeah um but yeah a lot of the readers who phoned in really appreciated the nature writing, how evocative yeah. it is, how painterly Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. I think it would be a mistake to think of this as really a travelogue, though. The point is that they're really quite isolated. They're up a high hill. Mm-hmm. Look at poor um, uh, Frederick when he has to walk up. He's beaded <laughs> with sweat and yes. puffing by the time he gets to the top. Obviously, it's not the sort of... Um, hide away that you want to go in and out constantly no. to the and village. And it's because it's an enchanted place. It too. is enchanted. You feel it's, it's yeah. just this sort of castle and its gardens that yeah. the magic happens in. And, and only the men go down and swim there. in the sea because that's what um, he does is his dip, Mr... Um, Mr Wilkins, Kins. yes. Yeah, he does that every M- morning. M- M- Mellish, that's Mellish. right, Mellish. <laughs> Such, Such an name. unfortunate name. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I know, I agree. But yeah, so um, Christina from Spain um, phoned in about how much she loved the nature writing in the book. So I'll share her message. Good afternoon, Miranda and Donna and all the members of this marvelous book club. Enchanted April has been a delight for me to read, not only because the plot is absolutely wonderful, but also because the writing is spectacular. You can literally smell the flowers, the trees, you can see the colors, and you can listen to the birds. What a beautiful final description closes the novel. I had never read anything similar. Just to finish, I would like to share a Mrs. Wilkins' thought. Why couldn't two unhappy people refresh each other? on their way through this dusty business of life by a little talk real, natural talk, about what they felt, what they would have liked, what they still tried to hope. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Christina. Thank you, as always, Christina. Yes, uh, I'm so glad you enjoyed the nature writing so much too. And... I love how part of the transformation of the characters is how they do end up talking so much more freely together. Absolutely, and they they set the aside end. the dustiness of life, don't they? I think yes. that was such a significant word in this. Yes, dusty because that they become not dusty at all. They're all fresh and exactly. Yes. And with Lottie, you see that change almost instantly. In yes. London, she's shy and awkward and blurts things out yes, yes. <laughs> and isn't very comprehensible sometimes. No. Whereas once she arrives at the castle at San Salvatore, she really transforms she almost does. instantly and she becomes the real leader. Yeah. And helps everyone else around her. But Definitely. Her, she becomes confident and calm. And, and what so she says perceptive. always matters. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. The, she, it's really her that saves the day for Frederick and Scrap. You it know, she, she leans yes. over and says, oh, look how quickly yes. <laughs> Rose's husband arrived. And that's yes. a saving grace there. It for is. Them. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, but yes, I agree too that it is a real novel of the senses. You can mm. smell the flowers and hear the lapping of the waves. Yes. And another reader, Antoinette from Canada, phoned in with a message and she mentioned the sensual quality yeah. of the writing. So I'll share her thoughts. Hello, Miranda and Donna. My name is Antoinette and I am from Canada. My general thoughts on the Enchanted April are certainly positive ones. 
I felt the author gave the women florals and freedom. The amount of beauty was so captivating and I truly wanted to visit San Salvatore myself. It was sensual, it was a giving book, and I certainly will be rereading it in the future. I adored it. Thank you so much for including it as your pick. Oh, thank you, thank Antoinette. Thank you, Antoinette. <laughs> That's lovely. And yes, yeah. I think it leaves us all wanting to visit San yes. Salvatore ourselves. And to me, I feel like The Enchanted April is a bit of a precursor to books like Eat, Pray, Love. You know, oh, that's clever. This yes. idea of, a yes. of, you know, setting out on on your own or with other journey women of discovery that's really a journey of yeah. self discovery yes. Yes. and through appreciating the landscape through the food things like yes. that yeah um obviously eat pray love is a bit different but i think some of its core is similar to the enchanted april that's really interesting and even though like you said i think the enchanted april isn't a travel log in that no. you know, it's not about Portofino, for no. instance, but it is still about the transformation that can come through travel and Absolutely. that sort of voyage of self discovery, yeah, um, that's somehow heightened by an actual voyage, yes, too, by yes. going somewhere new, it broadens your mind, and I think that. The book really does show that it makes you want to travel it does, and to experience but, but it different things. It also gives you that sometimes the journey is the worst part. Like they're hopelessly um, seasick, <laughs> then they have the miserable weather, for, and you know, at like the train yes. and they're going along, and then it it all clears up. But I love that detail of the rain falls straight down initially, <laughs> yes. not sideways like as it does in Hampstead. I I thought that was wonderful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but Madeleine in France phoned in with a message and um, she spoke a bit about this sense of travel and self-discovery that comes through the Enchanted April. So I'll play her message. Hi, Miwanda. Hi, Dana. I am Madeleine, a French reader, and I am so pleased to take part of the Comfort Book discussion. The Enchanted April, it's a very funny and clever book. I lot laugh, especially when Mrs. Wilkins says, I really see you in Italy. But sometimes I was very touched too by the personal impact of this trip on these ladies. This unexpected experience abroad can change their mind, point of view or vision of life. We often search a home path or goals in life, but traveling can actually be a very positive and efficient way to find it. Thanks, Miranda, for this lovely discover. Oh, thank you, yes. uh, Madeline. Thank yes. you, Madeline. That's so interesting, and I agree that through travel you can discover more about yourself and your philosophy on life sometimes you also discover things that aren't so good about yourself and that comes out in the book where um they're annoyed by their own ignorance yes, and never having yes. learned italian, italian for instance <laughs> yes, yes. Um, i know how that feels when yeah. you don't speak the local yes, language yeah, it's me so too. frustrating and they're frustrated yes. by that yeah and i thought yeah. that was very well done but that yes traveling is such a broadening experience and all of the women change and one of the ways i especially love that how they change especially looking at lady caroline scrap mm. and mrs fisher is at the start of the book they're all seeking their own space yes you know the, yes the, the, they're they, not about connection no, at all not. they want to be solitary but by the end, you get so much more of a feeling of sisterhood, yes. of female solidarity. Yes. Um, they have love 
not only for their less than perfect husbands, yes. for instance, yes. in the case of Rose and Lottie, yeah. but they have much more love for other women, for yeah. each other. Yeah. They have much more friendship and compassion to offer each other. Yeah. And I really love that particular transformation that occurs. And I think the ending is particularly touching when Lottie has another vision and she sees that she will be Mrs. Fisher's person, like yes. her best friend. Yes. We all need someone in life, yeah. as it says in the book, doesn't have to be romantic. No. Um, but we all need somebody. Yeah. And Lottie is prepared to be Mrs. Fisher's somebody and to give her friendship, give her love. I found that so touching. Yeah. You know, yeah. I thought it really was a lovely Me too. And I loved how the, the, generations. the generations came yeah. together yeah. in that way. And they, I, they breached that gulf they did. between them. They did. And uh, Jenneth from South Africa sent in a message saying that to her, the core... Uh, message in this book is all about love and I thought it would be a nice message to end with so I'll just play Jenneth's. Hi Miranda and Donna and the Comfort Book Club it's Jenneth here from South Africa this is my second reading of what is one of my favorite books and as my husband said I read it in 3D as I played the soundtrack of the Enchanted April while reading of Lottie and Rose's first foray into the garden of San Salvatore. One of my favourite quotes, the great thing is to have lots of love about. And that is the central point of the story for me. People belonging to love, rediscovering love, becoming love. I will have to watch the film again and that will be my beautiful end to a glorious read. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, thank you Jenneth. Jenneth. And yeah. Yes, I think that's a lovely point to end on. I mean, we could go on talking about this novel for ages yes. because yes. it's such a favourite and there's so much to say, but we're running out of time. Yeah. However, I will probably write a blog post on this because yeah. there's a lot more one there could is. add. There is. Um, but it's been a lovely discussion. Absolutely. So do let us know your thoughts on the book and special thanks to everyone who sent in yeah. a voice message. And that Jenna's was really so great. right. The film really is lovely. It's, it's very true it to the if book. You have I haven't seen the film. I think it was in 1992, something yes, like that. Yes, it must have been in the ni- early Vanessa 90s. Vanessa Redgrave is in it. Yes, and, um, oh, now I forget. Joan, Joan Plowright. Plowright. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. And it's really well worth watching. What lovely idea to play the soundtrack whilst you read the book. I yes. might have to do that myself yeah. <laughs> at some point. That sounds like so much fun. And then... To follow up, um, if you enjoyed The Enchanted April, I would definitely recommend reading Howard's End. Like oh, yes. Said. I think yes, that I think be that would be a good a, one. A good sort of follow up. Um, but also other novels, of course, by Elizabeth Vanarnam. That's Van what I think you're going to be doing. You're going to keep going on your Elizabeth Vanarnam. I Van am, Arnhem. yes. I've yeah. been reading a lot. I really recommend Elizabeth and Her German Garden, her first yeah. book. If you haven't read that, then do I uh, do read it again? Yeah. The nature writing is wonderful. Mm. It's uh, more autobiographical as well. Very interesting. And the solitary summer is a follow up read from that too. That's also oh lovely. And then Lady Caroline reminded me a lot of a character in Introduction to Sally, which. Von Arnhem wrote later than The Enchanted April. So I think she was thinking of Lady Caroline when she wrote Introduction to Sally. Again, this is a book about a woman so lovely that no man can resist her. But (laughs) there are very key differences between Sally and Lady Caroline, which Von Arnhem explores with a lot of wit and irony, as usual. So I also recommend this. Um... But I hope you enjoyed this discussion as yeah. much as we did. Yes, it's been I'm, so much fun. It's a nice sort of to go on to Jane Austen, who I think has some of the wit and irony too. Yes. Obviously, it's going backwards, but but I think we'll enjoy that too yes. with Emma. Yes, well, and oh yes, I forgot to bring Emma over here, yeah. but here we are, because yes, of course, May's discussion is 
Emma for the Comfort Book Club. Yeah. Uh, I loved all the little nods to Jane Austen in the yeah. Enchanted April. Yeah. And I think this will be a lovely follow-up read, of course, too. I'm also doing a giveaway of this lovely edition of Emma on my Miranda's Bookcase Instagram account that ends next Thursday, I think. So make sure you check out my Instagram if you'd like to win this um, copy. But thank you so much for thank watching you. this video and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye. Bye-bye.